seriously, I could talk for hours on this subject. Hi everyone, it's me, it's Signa from Sign of Horses. We have a bunch of French with whom we get together every six or eight weeks and we invite somebody to uh, give a lecture and uh, share their knowledge. Uh, sometimes mostly horse related, but sometimes it's completely different and we do like a Tai Chi master telling us about our breathing and our stance and how we find balance. It's a wonderful way to uh, gather knowledge and to share knowledge. Not only do we invite other lecturers, but we also share the knowledge that's, with, that's within the group. We also have a lot of fun. <laughs> Usually we uh, end up chatting for hours on end about our lovely horses and about our lives in general. It's great to get together with a group of like-minded people and share stuff. I am not going to film the entire evening, but I did want to st start the vlog here to share this way and maybe you want to start up a group in your area. This is the Zuidstroom in Vinkega. It's a stables and they have not one, not two, but they have three riding arenas. It's an amazing place. Uh, I was here years ago because Karen Rolf came here and did a clinic. Uh, very lucky to have been part of that. I'll show you a bit on the inside as well in a moment, but it's a great place to start this. It's a great place to start this vlog. Um, um, maybe I'll go to Bliss tomorrow and see if I can uh, put into practice a bit of what I've learned here. My friends are coming from behind the camera. I'm gonna sneak sneak some film in. It's Sitka from Bart and Blood. It's her, hi. And it's Mariko, who's just hi. a wonderful horse coach. Hi. interesting. Uh, I didn't hear, hear so many new things, which is fine. You don't always hear something uh, mind-blowing or that you have this aha moment that you think like, oh wow. But what the good thing was that it was a lot of confirmation of uh, what I love to do and what I love doing with horses. Um, uh, and I'm not the only one doing it that way and seeing that it works and not just seeing that it works, but also knowing from a biomechanical point of view that this is what it takes to balance out a horse. Join me uh, at home right now for a little clip where I explain the theory of everything. Not of everything, but of this concept. <laughs> right, thank you. Saying thanks to myself is a bit silly. <laughs> there is a two hour lecture I do, at least two hours. Sometimes it's even longer because it's such a incredibly valuable and magical subject. It's about bending and straightness training. It's in Dutch but it's easily translated to English so if you should ever want me to do it in English then just call me, contact me and I'll be there. It's a whole lecture where I try to make it easy to understand the uh, biomechanics of bend and straightness training. It's gonna be so hard to put this in like two or three minutes for you guys, but I'm going to give it a go. We are so obsessed 
by the neck and the posture of a horse that we forget that the main part of the horse is the body. That's the largest part of the horse and that's actually the part that we sit on. So forget about the neck and the head and concentrate on what the body is doing. The body will tell you what is going on in the head of the horse but also uh, if you ride the body then the neck will follow. They are attached. It's incredible. They are attached to each other. A horse uses its neck to balance out whatever his body is doing. When you are able to put the building blocks of the horse, like the shoulders and the rib cage and the hind end, if you can align them, then the he head and the neck will naturally drop down. That's the magic. You don't have to worry about the head and the neck posture. It will follow if you concentrate on what the body is doing. And that is why these additional reins that you see people using with lunging to get the horse to put his neck down doesn't actually help his natural urge to put his neck down. A horse uses his neck to balance his body. So when you... Um, I want to, I try, I'm trying to avoid words like fixate or uh, hold on or stiffen, but it, that is what it is. When you fixate his neck, he won't be able to balance out his body. So he'll, he will use different methods to balance out, um, like tightening muscles instead of relaxing them. So first of all, we have to train ourselves to see what our horse is doing when they are on the circle, when we are lunging them. You have to really, really look at the shoulder and at the bum and what it's doing, if it's veering off or if it's veering towards you. And a lot of people I know have trouble lunging their horse because the horse won't go out, won't go away from them. And that's also shoulder displacement. You have to push that shoulder away from you. Uh, and once you get to uh, control that shoulder, that's a big part of leadership, but it's also a huge ingredient of helping your horse to balance out more. The first thing is to actually notice your horse doing it. Next time you lunge your horse, really, really pay attention. Don't look at the head, don't look at anything else, don't look at how well he's walking and see what his shoulder and hind end is doing on that circle. So what you see is that a lot of horses find it difficult to go on a circle and they will balance it out with their neck. So they'll point their neck outwards so their body can go on the circle. I know it sounds weird, but just watch your horse doing it and you'll notice, I promise, you'll notice do them doing it. We're going to go back to the riding arena uh, because Bliss is showing some examples of doing that and I will try to explain the exercise of going on a square circle, going on a circle with corners <laughs> while lunging or riding. It's hard to tell because Blizz is so short of body and so short in his neck. But going on the circle, his neck is pointing outward and his shoulder is kind of falling towards me. Have a good look at he's going round on this somewhat circle kind of type of thing. There, did you see it? Now to remedy this, I ask him to turn corners and in each corner point his bum either to the outside or his shoulder come in towards me. As a result he will go straighter on the straight lines between the corners. As you can see here his shoulder is coming in and I frantically try to correct it. Move his shoulder away from me, it didn't work out there but in the second try he moves his shoulder and then rounds the corner after that, being much straighter afterwards. The result is incredible. So after a while you just stick to it and you get your horse going perfectly straight and even anticipating the next corner. And there's always time for a nice reward and a big cuddle to tell him that he's a wonderful, wonderful little pony. I asked him to lie down so I could mount him and show you this uh, exercise under the saddle. You turn a corner either by moving the hind end and then go straight. Did you see his neck drop there? 
again, turn the corner and then enjoy going straight. That was it. It is the end of the vlog. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. A thumbs up. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and release that inner Viking. Help your heart balance out. He'll love you for it. Promise. <laughs>